I think not going to a place where it is warm while I read my book, and the scroll given to me by the Skull Village Shaman was a mistake. I was shivering quite badly for a while after swimming through the icy cold water. So now, with my wet items off, I'm just warming up. Nord style, if you will. A big old fire inside a wooden building is just what I needed. Yeah, I've been thinking about it. If I'm still immune to disease, then a cold or the flu should no longer affect me either. So if I sneeze, then it's because there was something my nose breathed in that tickled it. It's not further north, but to the northwest of the island, it is a place of higher elevation, so it is colder. There is even a glacier over there. It's also the place where the Falmer made their last stand. Are these Reeklings the descendants of the Falmer? Hmm, I cannot answer that question, but some on this island do wonder about it. As I saw, their ears are pointed like elves, but then so are goblins, who as far as I know, have nothing in common ancestry with the intelligent races of Tamriel. I wish I knew a scholar who might know. There are none on this island that I've heard of. I'd probably have to go to the Imperial City to find one. Perhaps someone at the Mages Guild there would be able to answer. This feeling, though. I'm very much at ease. I sort of feel like dozing off. Maybe. Maybe I'll have a nap, especially after enduring that cold. <sighs> oh, I think I nodded off there for a little bit. I don't know how long it's going to take for these things to dry, but... Hmm. Touching it. No, I might need another hour. Maybe I'll just lay down here in the corner again, up here in the Great Hall. Nice big flame down there keeping it all warm. Yeah, this sounds good to me. Another hour or two. Okay. Huh. Well, my pants are dry. Okay, what's this other thing? The story of Avar Stoneslinger? Sit quietly, child, and listen, for the story I tell you is a story of the ages. But what is it, Grandfather? Is it a story of heroes and beasts? The Grandfather looked patiently at the child. He was growing into a fine boy. Soon he would see the value in the stories, the lessons that were taught to each generation. Just listen, child. Let the story take root in your heart. In a time before now, long before now, when the skull were new, there was peace in the land. The sun was hot and the crops grew long, and the people were happy in the peace that the Allmaker provided. But the Skull grew complacent and lazy, and they took for granted the lands and all the gifts the Allmaker had given them. They forgot, or chose not to remember, that the adversary is always watching, and that he delights in tormenting the Allmaker and his chosen people. And so it was that the adversary came to be among the Skull. The adversary has many aspects. He appears in the unholy beasts and the incurable plague. At the end of seasons, we will know him as Thartag, the world devourer. But in these ages, he came to be known as the Greedy Man. The Greedy Man, that is what we call him, for to speak his name would certainly bring ruin on the people, lived among the skull for many months. Perhaps he was just a man, but when the adversary entered into him, he became the Greedy Man, and that is how he is remembered. It came to be one day that the powers of the skull left him. The strength of the arms of the warriors and the shamans could no longer summon the beasts to their side. The elders thought that surely the Allmaker was displeased, and some suggested that the Allmaker had left them forever. It was then that the greedy man appeared to them and spoke. You of the skull have grown fat and lazy. I have stolen the gifts of your Allmaker. I have stolen the oceans, so you will forever know thirst. I have stolen the lands and the trees and the sun, so your crops will wither and die. I have stolen the beasts, so you will go hungry, and I have stolen the winds, so you will live without the spirit of the Allmaker. And until one of you can reclaim these gifts, the Skull will live in misery and despair, for I am the Greedy Man, and that is my nature. And the Greedy Man disappeared. The members of the Skull spoke for many days and nights. They knew that one of them must retrieve the gifts of the Allmaker, but they could not decide who it should be. I cannot go, said the elder, for I must stay to lead the skull and tell our people what is the law. I cannot go, said the warrior, for I must protect the skull. 
My sword will be needed in case the greedy man reappears. I cannot go, said the shaman, for the people need my wisdom. I must read the portents and offer my knowledge. It was then that a young man called Ivar lifted his voice. He was strong of arm and fleet of foot, though he was not yet a warrior of the skull. I will go, said Ivar, and the skull laughed. Hear me out, the boy continued. I am not yet a warrior, so my sword will not be needed. I cannot read the portents, so the people will not seek my counsel. And I am young, and not yet wise in the ways of the law. I will retrieve the gifts of the Allmaker from the greedy man. If I cannot, I will not be missed. The skull thought on this briefly, and decided to let Ivar go. He left the village the next morning to retrieve the gifts. Ivar first set out to retrieve the gift of water, so he traveled to the water stone. It was there that the Allmaker first spoke to him. Travel west to the sea, and follow the swimmer to the waters of life. So Ivar walked to the edge of the ocean, and there was the swimmer, a black horker, sent from the Allmaker. The swimmer dove into the waters, and swam very far and far again. Ivar was strong, though, and he swam hard. He followed the swimmer to a cave. Swimming deeper and deeper, his lungs burning, and his limbs exhausted. At last, he found a pocket of air, and there in the dark, he found the waters of life. Gathering his strength, he took the waters and swam back to the shore. Upon returning to the water stone, the Allmaker spoke. You have returned the gift of water to the skull. The oceans again will bear fruit, and their thirst will be quenched. Ivar then traveled to the earth stone, and there the Allmaker spoke to him again. Enter the cave of the hidden music, and hear the song of the earth. So Ivar traveled north and east to the cave of the hidden music. He found himself in a large cavern, where the rocks hung from the ceiling, and grew from the ground itself. He listened there, and heard the song of the earth, but it was faint. Grabbing up his mace, he struck the rocks of the floor in time with the song, and the song grew louder, until it filled the cavern with his heart. Then he returned to the earth stone. The gift of the earth is with the skull again, said the Allmaker. The lands are rich again, and will bear life. Ivar was tired. As the sun burned him, the trees offered no shade, and there was no wind to cool him. Still, he traveled on to the beast rock, and the Allmaker spoke. Find the good beast, and ease his suffering. Ivar traveled through the woods of the Isenfir for many hours, until he heard the cries of a bear from over a hill. As he crested a hill, he saw the bear, a Falmer's arrow piercing its neck. He checked the woods for the Falmer, for what is what they were, though some say they are not. And finding none, approached the beast, he spoke soothing words and came upon it slowly, saying, Good beast, I mean you no harm. The Allmaker has sent me to ease your suffering. Hearing these words, the bear ceased his struggles and laid his head at Ivar's feet. Ivar grasped the arrow and pulled it from the bear's neck. Using the little nature magic he knew, Ivar tended the wound, though it took the last bit of his strength. As the bear's wound closed, Ivar slept. When he awoke, the bear stood over him with the remains of a number of the Falmer were strewn about. He knew that the good beast had protected him during the night. He traveled back to the beast rock, the bear by his side, and the Allmaker spoke to him again. You have returned the gift of the beasts. Once again, the good beasts will feed the skull when they are hungry, clothe them when they are cold, and protect them in times of need. Ivar's strength had returned, so he traveled on to the tree stone, though the good beasts did not follow him. When he arrived, the Allfather spoke to him. The first trees are gone, and must be replanted. Find the seed and plant the first tree. Ivar traveled again through the Herstang forest, searching for the seeds of the first tree, but he could find none. Then he spoke to the tree spirits, the living trees. They told him that the seeds had been stolen by one of the Falmer, for they are the servants of the adversary, and this Falmer was hiding them deep in the forest, so that none would ever find them. Ivar traveled to the deepest part of the forest, and there he found the evil Falmer, surrounded by the lesser tree spirits. Ivar could see that the spirits were in his thrall, and that he had used the magic of the seeds and spoken their secret name. Ivar knew he could not stand against such a force, and that he must retrieve the seeds in secret. Ivar reached into his pouch and drew out his flint. Gathering leaves, he started a small fire outside the clearing where the Falmer and the Asaurus spirits milled. All the Skull know the spirit's hatred of fires. 
for the fires ravaged the trees they serve. At once, the nature of the spirits took hold, and they rushed to quell the flames. During the commotion, Ivar snuck behind the farmer and snatched the pouch of seeds, stealing away before the evil being knew they were gone. When Ivar returned to the tree stone, he planted the tree in the ground, and the Allmaker spoke to him. The gift of trees is restored. Once again, the trees and plants will bloom and grow, and provide nourishment and shade. Ivar was tired, for the sun would only burn, and the winds would not yet cool him. But he rested briefly in the shade of the trees. His legs were weary and his eyes heavy, but he continued on, traveling to the sunstone. Again, the Allmaker spoke. The gentle warmth of the sun is stolen, so now it only burns. Free the sun from the halls of Penumbra. And so Ivar walked west over the frozen lands until he reached the halls of Penumbra. The air inside was thick and heavy, and he could see no farther than the end of his arm. Still, he felt his way along the walls. Though he had heard the shuffling of feet, and knew that this place held the unholy beasts who would tear his flesh and eat his bones, for hours he crept along until he saw a faint glow far at the end of the hall. There from behind a sheet of perfect ice came a glow so bright he had to shut his eyes, lest they be forever blinded. He plucked the flaming eye from one of the unholy beasts and threw it at the ice with all his might. A small crack appeared in the ice, then grew larger. Slowly, the light crept out between the cracks, widening them, splitting the ice wall into pieces. With the deafening crack, the walls crumbled, and the light rushed over Ivar through the halls. He heard the shrieks of the unholy beasts as they were blinded and burned. He ran out of the halls following the light and collapsed on the ground outside. When he was able to rise again, the sun again warmed him, and he was glad for that. He traveled back to the sunstone, where the Allmaker spoke to him. The gift of the sun is the skulls once again. It will warm them and give them light. Ivar had one final gift he had to recover, the gift of the winds. So he traveled to the windstone far on the western coast of the island. When he arrived, the Allmaker spoke to him, giving him his final task. Find the greedy man and release the wind from its captivity. So Ivar wandered the land in search of the greedy man. He looked in the trees, but the greedy man did not hide there. Nor did he hide near the oceans or the deep caves, and the beasts had not seen him in the dark forests. Finally, Ivar came to a crooked house, and he knew that here he would find the greedy man. Who are you, shouted the greedy man, that you would come to my house? I am Ivar of the Skull, said Ivar. I am not warrior, shaman, or elder. If I do not return, I will not be missed. But I have returned the oceans, and the earth, the trees, the beasts, and the sun, and I will return the winds to my people, that we may feel the spirit of the Allmaker in our souls again. And with that, he grabbed up the greedy man's bag and tore it open. The winds rushed out with gale force, sweeping the greedy man up and carrying him off far from the island. Ivar breathed in the winds and was glad. He walked back to the windstone, where the Allmaker spoke to him a final time. You have done well, Ivar, you the least of the skull have returned my gifts to them. The greedy man is gone for now, and should not trouble your people again in your lifetime. Your Allmaker is pleased. Go now, and live according to your nature." And Ivar started back to the Skull Village. And then what happened, Grandfather? What do you mean, child? He went home. No. When he returned to the village, the child continued, was he made a warrior, or taught in the ways of the shaman? Did he lead the Skull in battle? I do not know. That is where the story ends, said the grandfather. But that's not an ending. That is not how stories end. The old man laughed and got up from his chair. Is it not? Well, that was a bit of a story. It's probably time to gather up everything. I would like to leave while there's still Magnus out and shining. Uh, they're dry now. Dry-ish. They'll probably dry with the warmth of my body in them. Okay, let's find those stairs, but before then I gotta get dressed. I've also repaired my armor. So I suppose I'm gonna be wearing all white at some point. Ooh. Magnus. Past midday. 
Okay, so I've been thinking that I cannot just go and do whatever... I'm supposed to be doing the locations of the stones, or whatever the shaman said. I have to go, I would think, in order. So the windstone was last. Was it not the tree stone was first? I'll have to go over the story. But I'm right here. So the bear stone and the windstone are the closest. Locations the stone. Where would it be? Oh, he went to get the water. F so the water stone first. Water. Earth stone. Water, earth. And then beasts. Water, earth, and beasts. That's half of them. Water stone is... Oh, that's the place I did not want to go first. This is the glaciers up here in the northwest, so it's going to be a cold area. Water first, then earth to the south of that, then beasts, which is just south of here, the village. You know what? That's fine. I'm going to... Uh, I do feel a little bit drained, so I'm going to go back and also talk to... Uh, that woman, what's her name? Severa Gracia. About the uh, Greetings to you. Uncle Sweet Share. Pleasure to meet you. You're not her. You must be her. You seem like very good company. Sunil Railvane, do my eyes deceive me, or is that a white clothing fur helm? Then the deed is done. The Moon Sugar Poisoner has been brought to justice. Excellent work. You've done a great service to me, the Legion, and the Empire itself. Take this gold as payment for a job well done. And I would also give you another reward. As a symbol of my personal thanks, this short sword has served me well, and you'll find its enchantments will really rally others to your cause. Oh, okay. Well, he took, she took the cap and gave me the sword. Thank you. Now, where is that Imperial that I was working with? I thought maybe I left him at the what uh, say you? cave. What say you? Well, I can always go up and see the the other one I could work with. The woman. There she is. You've got to find the captain. The fort needs him. Okay, I didn't actually find the captain, but... Were you able to find the captain? What do those Nords have to say? Absolutely nothing. They gave me a story about their ancestors and... We're taking the wind. They don't know anything. I doubt that. You'll need to get closer. They're a cagey bunch. Go live among them. See what you can learn. You may have to stick with them for a long time, but you're up to it. I'll take care of things here. You keep an eye on those Nords. Get in good with them. Hmm. Okay. Oops. Uh, downstairs. This is the stairs. Ivar Stone Slinger. I think that story was absolute rubbish, by the way. It's just garbage. Well met, friend. Oh, hello again. Hope you're doing well, Marissa. Okay, so I'm just what going to see... You? You're right in the way, guard. See if, um... The East Empire Company needs any more support. Archmaster of Red Dora. How may I serve you? Hello again, Carnius Magius. What is it, darling? Is this about your current assignment? I don't have any work for you right now. Check back when construction has progressed some. Yeah, I believe you already said that. Okay. Off on my own. Got a little hurt there for some reason. Okay, so water, earth, then beasts. Doesn't show where I am, but I should be like right here. The sunstone is really close. So I've got to go northwest, and I'm going to see some ice. Hello again. <sighs> Have you heard of Eric the Unworthy? I heard about Eric's demise. Can't say I'll miss him much. Can you tell me about Tharsten Hartfang? Never heard of him. 
Sounds like one of the Nords up north. Yeah, he's... He's the shaman, actually. I believe he's the shaman. Okay, well, I'll be on be my way. Be careful now. out here in the wild. There's more moving above. Oh, yes, actually. I, I really should go to Thursk. Yeah, let's go to Thursk because... I might be able to get a piece of armor with all these bear hides. I'm uh, toting around a lot of weight, you know. I could probably get rid of quite a bit on me. But let's go to Thursk. Can you help a warrior in trouble? With this wolf? What's wrong, Nord? Hail, Snell. I've heard of you. I'm not sure what your business is out here in the wild, but I'm glad you're not one of my Skull brothers. They surely wonder why I'm not inside the barrel, killing the Valbrander Draugr. The what? The what what? Aye, it's the Draugr that resides here in Valbrander Barrel. I'm supposed to kill it, you see. Single-handedly, killing a Draugr is a task every Skull lad must complete before becoming a man. Only I can't kill it. I've tried. It nearly slit my throat. But I can't return to my village until it's dead. Say, maybe you can help? You could go with me? Serve as a distraction? What's a Draugr? I suppose so. Uh, Alright, I'll help. No sense in letting you get killed. Good. With your help, I'll make short work of the Draugr. Lead on, Snell. I'll follow. And when we encounter the beast, you distract it while I attack. Please do not attack the Draugr. I alone must attack and kill it. At least then, well, I may retain a shred of my honor, and will at last feel like I earned my place among my people, even if I did get a little help. What's a Draugr? Imagine an angry Nord. Now imagine a dead angry Nord with a taste for human flesh. You get the picture? Oh, so it's like some kind of undead. Yeah, well, that's what a full suit of bear armor looks like. Okay, I actually have a ring. Um, or some enchanted item on me. Uh, that's not it. What's this ring? That's not it either. Yeah, don't I... Maybe it was a belt. I thought I had an item that uh, deflected damage back, which... Yeah, I don't seem to have a belt on me anymore. I hope I didn't misplace it at some point. It was a nice belt, too. Yeah, I don't see the belt. Ring, ring. Hmm. Maybe I... Don't know. Strange. But I take it this is the place. This is more Belladonna. Okay. We're going in then. Oh, oh. Uh. Is this supposed Get to be in. You're dead to attack? Already. Ah. Mm, this armor isn't as protective as my adamantine armor. It certainly is an ugly thing. Got it, Ingmar. By the gods, that was a good fight. Did you see me? I was magnificent with the Draugr. Dead, I am truly a man. <laughs> I've got to get back to the Skull village and tell my brothers the good news. If you're ever in the village, come to my house and I shall greet you as a brother. Oh, and Sunil Rilvang, I trust you'll keep this between the two of us. I wish I could offer some kind of reward, but I have so little. I know. I shall leave the Draugr's treasure be. It is yours, my friend. Take all you like. Okay, then. This is a Valbrander Draugr? Like, there's nothing on it, but it's loincloths. What is this? Nordic silver. Actually, that is worth a little bit, but... 
Well, isn't this like stealing from the dead? I don't feel comfortable doing this. Even if they're not my dead. Yeah, I don't, uh, hmm. No. That's, no. Real Dunmer don't do that. Okay. Well, that's the job done. Looks like a price hag. Hey! Mm, she's pretty. I hate doing this. That's a reekling. And here she goes. Oh, yeah, that's right. I didn't uh, pray at the shrine. What a waste of a good woman. Wolf. Grandmaster Lockpick. Some of my arrows back. One gold piece. That's all you had on you. Okay, right, back to Thirsk. Evening. Magnus is going down. I guess I can always stay in Thirsk for the night. Although I did have a nap a few hours long. Hello, I'm back, Come Nord. Friend. I make the best armor on all of Solstein. Do you now? Okay, so I am looking for snow bear... Yeah, snow bear armor. I definitely have the money. What could I use, actually? Nothing right now. Hold on. Okay, so... Left bracer and right pauldron. I don't know if they're called the same. Left bracer. Which would be a gauntlet. And a... Left bracer and right pauldron. Snow bear, right pauldron. Okay, so that's two. Removed. Ah, I knew you'd come through, Snow. Give me the pelts and gold. Come back tomorrow. Same time. And I'll have your custom snow bear, right pauldron, ready. Okay, so I'm also looking for... Oh, your custom snow bear, right pauldron isn't ready yet. Come back later. Oh, okay, I don't want to act like that. Okay, let me see if I can't get rid of some of this weight. And honestly, I don't... Oh, 40,000. This is very heavy sword. Isn't there anyone? Ah... Uh, look at this. The Mount of Woe is worth quite a bit as well. Blood ring. I've got too many things worth too much on me. Girl. He doesn't buy it. But he should buy... Where's the sword I was getting? Severia's Imperial Sword. Yeah, that's worth like practically nothing. I don't know. I guess that's the haul she had. Three snow bear pelts left. That does help my weight a little bit. A bipolar blade. I estimate it's worth around 40,000 gold. If you can get full price for it. But where can you get full price these days? Nowhere. Silver spark blade. I can sell that. Nord mead. That's right. Here. You know what? How about this? 160 for the both. I don't really want to hang around this island when it's Magnus is down. Um, yeah, the temperature also plummets, and especially where I'm going, it's going to be really cold. And by the time I get there, it'll probably be past midnight, and it will be just too cold for me. Oh, this warmth. Nice. Here to talk? Hello You're again. A welcome break from the locals. I'm just going to leave the body there, huh? Okay. Well, they said I could sleep as much as I wanted. Nice and warm in here. Oh, wait, there's a... He just sells books, though. Whatever. I do have some books I can sell. Maybe in the morning. Uh, yeah. Whew, I should maybe check back with Carnius Magius to see if he has any assignments for me. Uh, I don't know why he didn't say anything about it yesterday. Maybe he should have. Care for some light Hello reading. again. Now let's see, I've got a few things to get rid of. I don't want to get rid of that, or that. Don't wear that. The Warrior's Charge. Thirska History, I read that. Unnamed book. Story of Avar Stone Slinger. I need to keep that. I guess you don't pick anything but books, okay. 60 gold. Ah, cheapskate. 
55. Thanks. What is he writing here? Wait, 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 wait. I remember now. Ecdesiast. That's it. She used to work as an ecdesiast. What is an ecdesiast? That that was weird. Ah, oh, new day. It's not it's clear. It's not going to be snowing or raining. Let's see if my armor is done. I know he said the same time next day, but let's just see. Come, friend. Sometimes they get things make done the earlier. Best armor on all of Solstice. How about snow bear armor? It's ready. Here you go. One expertly crafted snow bear, right pauldron. It came out even better than I expected. If you need anything else, I'm your man. Yeah, I need a left gauntlet, actually. Left gauntlet. Aha, I knew you'd come through. Here, give me the pelts and gold. Come back tomorrow, same time. And I'll have your custom snow bear, left gauntlet, ready. Well, I've got one item. One of many to get. Yeah. Upon throwing it in my pack, I don't seem to see it now. Oh, it's got a magical effect on it. He says it's got a resist frost on it. Not very much, but it's something. Well, that actually doesn't... I guess this is the enchantment over it, but it's more of a grayish fur. Oh, well. Especially with resist frost, that's going to really help me. All right, so I have to go to the far west of the island, which is this way. Oh, see that? That uh, mountain over there. That has to be... I don't know what that has to be. <laughs> it doesn't show... Oh, wait, uh, it does kind of show. That's too far north. No, it's not. That would be the wrong place, then. That's what I'm thinking of. I guess between the two mountains... The three mountains? I think what I'm looking for is right about this way. Yeah. Okay then. Now we just have to get over there. <laughs> 